thinking. You can see I've beaten this book, you know, to death already. A lot of good stuff in there, and uh, you shouldn't miss out. So I'm going to give you the cream, the creme de la creme <laughs> of um, chapter four, which is entitled Your Brain's Rolls Royce Architecture. What is he talking about here? Yes, your mind and body infinitely exceed the beauty and the function of the finest vehicle in the world. Is that so? Wow. There is no comparison between the complexities and fine-tuning of the superior human mind to the most advanced man-made technology ever developed. Well, we tell Elon Musk, with all his beautiful cars, you need to say we exceed that? We're better than all his rocketry? It's amazing. Anyway, um, as a medical student in pharmacology class, they taught us that if you know the structure of a drug, you then know uh, its function and how it will behave or work in the body. Maybe not in all cases, but, uh, you know, uh, but he, we weren't, uh, he, they weren't trying to tell me that um, it's just, uh, you know, the, uh, the structure of a drug. We need to know the structure of anything, any problem. You need to know what, what's going on. And uh, so that's what uh, basically is inferred here. Um, I have used a more general form of that statement for numerous situations other than pharmacology. I find it to be totally true and highly effective. I suggest that you use it whenever and wherever appropriate. Let me tell you. You can perhaps think of it and reword it to say, if you know the structure of a problem or situation, you will then know how to solve or address it. Wouldn't that be true? I would say so. You could visualize the structure of the brain as being an infinite array of micro-transmitting antennae points or tuning forks, transmitting and receiving information continuously between them, even in your sleep, probably. Any number of different points in the brain that store unique complex waveforms or vibrations may also share waveforms that are quite similar or resonant to each other. That's how we get recall. When you have resonance, then if you hang a, hold a tuning form and you hit it, you know, and it's 250 CPS cycle, cycles per second, you hold another one next to it, the other one will start to vibrate. And um, that's what's, another word for that is resonance. And you can visualize the structure of the brain as being an infinite array, again, of micro-transmitting micro antennae points or tuning forks transmitting and receiving information uh, between them. Any number of different points in the brain that store unique complex waveforms or vibrations may also share waveforms that are quite similar or resonant to each other. And there's the word again, resonant. What does that mean? Well, it's when two objects are resonant to each other, you have the best chance of having information transmitted. Um, in other words, it's you're fine-tuning your uh, recovery of information. So we're going to get back into that. The greatest transfer of information and energy will occur when there is resonance. <clears throat> so, for example, when you strike one of the two tuning forks of the same frequency or, multi or multiple harmonic and bring them close to each other, the second one will also start to vibrate. This is what is called recall. This is basically how we remember things. Another way of saying it. If the older, if the other tuning fork has contiguous sections, in other words, things that are next to each other or touch each other, 
that are not the same frequency or harmonic, they will also be forced to vibrate as well because they are physically connected. Similarly, if two points in the brain were to share similar waveforms where one has a dissimilar characteristic, characteristic appended, both the similar and dissimilar components will vibrate thus detecting the component that is dissimilar that we are looking for. That's a mouthful. Did I write that? Anyway, this is the physical electromagnetic counterpart for word or idea. Associations, which enables one to retrieve sought-after information stored superficially or deep in our psyche, in our minds. And the mind keeps coming up. Anyway, it's an amazing structure that we have. You know, it's 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 too bad that uh, youth is wasted on the youth. <laughs> All the things that you should know. It's just knowledge is so great. Also, this is how a trained memory expert will attach a tag word to be easily remembered as part of a shared visual uh, or story. <clears throat> An example of that is the word she, S-H-E. This brings up the word Sheila, S-H-E-I-L-A, which contains the similar or associated element of the word S-H-E, and vice versa. Hence, we now have a physical defin definition or what we mean by association or recollection, recollection, basically resonance. <clears throat> so in the next topic, if the ambient noise level of the brain is very high, it will block or resist the transfer, the transfer of information. Recall will be slow and you will feel fatigued. You will need to expend more energy in an effort to send and receive information between all points in the mind. Otherwise, you get fatigued. Noise, uh, you know, it's just like when you have a wire. Um, the insulation is basically the noise, and um, which covers up um, what's going on inside of us. If the ambient noise level and the mind is very low or quiet, again, the transfer of information could be excessive, resulting in information overload. This will come in very, very important when we uh, work on suicidal, the suicidal mindset, which is part of this lecture series. We devote a whole chapter to it, and uh, you shouldn't miss it. If the ambient noise of the mind is very low or quiet, the transfer of information could be excessive, resulting in information overload. If I repeat something, it's important, and I want you to remember that. <clears throat> you now desire noise to resist, block, or govern the excessive information being relayed from one part of the brain to another. So in the middle of the night, when your noise level is really down or low, uh, um, your mind goes wild. In the dream, you see images, you see pictures. They're coming from all different places simply because the noise level is so low that the resistance to the, to the information is very low, and then you get what's called information overload. Um, or even a nightmare. Basically, so a nightmare is when all parts of the brain are connected to every other part of the brain when the noise level is low and, you know, all bets are off. Anything can happen. And the thing about a nightmare, I don't know if it's happened to you, it's happened to me, you know, you think that it's true and you start acting as though you were expecting something that's not even there. Um, the strange things are happening upstairs. Strange things. But we're getting to know them. So now, 
that you understand more about physical structure, you know a little more about how you mentally function. In low noise thinking, as opposed to no noise or high noise or noise thinking, there is an optimal level at which maximum efficiency for mental function will occur. This is the goal we wish to achieve for a wide variety of mental functions and conditions to be discussed throughout this entire book. LNT is very is the very basic core formula that I have researched over the past 50 years and tested over 50 years. This is a long time. Should have written a lot more books. Uh, this is fun. <clears throat> Please excuse me for being repetitious here. <clears throat> and uh, throughout this book, I simply want to make sure that you fully understand the nature, significance, importance of what is being presented to you here and now. It's very, very important. These are, you know, we take for granted. If you need help, please contact me personally or talk to one of our trained associates. Uh, I generally return messages uh, quite rapidly, um, you know, and you can reach me all different ways if you email me. My email address, by the way, is cyberside, that's C-Y-B-E-R-C-Y at me.com. C for Charlie, Y for Young, B for Bob, B for Bob, B for Edward, R for Romeo, that's cyber. Now comes Cy, C for Charlie, Y for Young, at me.com. It was one of those early Apple uh, things that I managed to come in on. <clears throat> so, now that you understand more about your physical structure, you know a little more than most people out there know, believe me. <clears throat> in low noise thinking as opposed to no noise or high noise, so when somebody says low noise, you're automatically implying four different noise states, very high, normal, uh, subnormal, and zero. Zero signifies death. If there's no signal transmission anywhere in the body, that means you're not cooking upstairs. You know, you're out. You're not, you're not, anyway, you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> so I really want to make sure that you fully understand the nature, significance, and importance of what is being presented to you. And uh, I can assure you that the LMT formula will work for you as it did for me and a lot of other people. And so enjoy LNT, low noise thinking, and um, uh, send me an email. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it's working for you. If not, we'll give you some uh, helpful pointers. We'll hold your hand. In any case, that's the end of Chapter 4, uh, the Rolls-Royce uh, uh, Architecture of the Brain. Uh, now uh, we're going to be talking on chapter 5 coming up in the next intelligence is basically finding a needle in your haystack. You know what I mean? Upstairs is your haystack. So we're going to be discussing that next and um, see you then.